everybody, this is Enrico back again on your computer screens. <laughs> Hope you guys are in good spirits, like this video because it helps out a lot. You can just like this video, it's cool. Positivity will always be my thing. <laughs> Was that kind of corny? <laughs> but let's dissect this black scent and how black people get very offended when certain non-black people use it. I'm going to be talking about like Korean people, East Asian people today. However, I knew nothing about this term until I was reading certain articles and they were like, the black scent. And I'm like, what is a black scent? I'm black. I don't even know what this is. One of the most famous examples of this that people have used a lot was Aquafina and her character in Crazy Rich Asians and how she decided to portray that character. You know, you ain't, you gonna swerve. And I'm just like, okay, I watch Crazy Rich Asian. Does she really talk like that? You know, like, is that really like her life experience of talking like that? Or did she just take inspiration from black films and how black people talk and just used it toward the film's character? And who gave the okay for this? Did they think that black people were gonna relate to this? Okay, I thought it was kind of funny a little bit, but then at the same time when I found out that that wasn't really her truth and that she was nowhere near that type of language growing up, and I was like, okay, I'm a little disappointed. It, it was kind of just out of pocket because what Aquafina did with that whole character was really going into or was in that culture vulture car category. But at the same time, you know, she's cool. I don't hate her, but I will call you out if you're doing something that does detriment to my people, especially as a black person. Another person I see a lot of people talk about is Jessie. She was known from Unpretty Rap Star. People in Korea weren't really checking for her before then, but like people in Korea, all around the world, they know about her now. I love this woman. Love her music. I check for her music all the time. I love her personality. I do believe if I were to play devil's advocate here and stick up for her a little tiny bit, I believe that Jessie is more of cultural assimilation. Being, enjoying the sun and going on vacation and putting on tanning oil and being tan, like liking to have some vitamin C and D is a bad thing. I didn't know that was black fishing. You know what I mean? Which is weird because like a lot of people keep saying that and it's just like, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. How can I try to make myself look black? It's like, it's okay. Because I know a lot of Korean people that are from New Jersey, New York area that talk like her. And it's because they've been around hip-hop culture, people that talk like that. It's just a way to talk. And, you know, especially with the usage of the N-word and especially black people in this whole war of who can say it and who can. And some black people give passes. Like, if you real cool with black people and that's who you're mostly around, they'll say, oh, you can say it, you know. But at the same time, there are black people that think that nobody should be saying it. That um, other black people think... Only black people should say it. I see all of the points. And I don't have any bias against either point of view. I mostly just agree with everybody. At the same time, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I do feel a certain type of way when there's someone that isn't black that uses the word. Especially when they use it to be cool and they don't really have any support for the black community in their bones. So, Jesse, to me, cultural assimilation, and there are people that do assimilate into the black culture because that's who they're mostly around. I have friends who are Korean also that when their parents brought them over from Korea at a young age, they mostly were in an all-black environment. Like, I had one guy that told me, like, I thought I was black <laughs> until a certain age. He was like, because I was around all black people, that's all I knew. So, like, he talked a certain way, and he really related to the black struggle, even though he wasn't black. He got it because that's who his homeboys were. So, you know, I get that. I understand that. But I feel like the people that assimilate into our culture, as far as the urban culture, that street culture, the hip-hop culture, they will be more supportive toward black people and our struggle with what we're going through. 
because they have a front row seat to it. Wherein another person who might talk a certain way and might take our culture because they feel like it's cool and to use it, they most of the time don't really have supportive stuff to say about black people. And in fact, they'll love hip hop, love our music, love how we dress and the whole aesthetic, but we'll still sit up and talk mad mess about black people. And will never have anything nice to say about black people except for when it benefits them or using black people in their videos. So these are the people that use the black scent that we definitely need to be on the lookout for. And I can see these people from a mile away and I don't like it. People like to go after another rapper, China Mac. Who's, you know, who's very raw. Wears his heart on his sleeve. He says we gotta say you don't care about what nobody thinks. Another one, cultural assimilation. And, you know, I do feel like that he's less a culture vulture and more just, that's what he knows. And I do think as black people, we need to see the difference. And we need to be ready to pull out the swords and the weapons for the people that are taking our culture. And they're using it and they don't know nothing about our culture at all. They don't care about us as people. They don't care about where it came from, the essence and the struggle. Just hurt that's in hip-hop and R&B and rap and the beginning of music too and how bluegrass really influenced rock and roll and country and how we are very sensitive to certain things that are triggers to us like seeing someone who isn't black benefiting off of stuff that we've been doing the whole time as far as our hair and the hairstyles we wear and how we dress and we talk and how we sing and seeing someone who isn't black, who's maybe Korean, getting all that praise for that, it does hurt. But at the same time, we need to know the people that are allies and the people that are just using it as a costume. And if you're not using it as a costume, then this doesn't pertain to you. And you know, if you're in support of us and the culture, and I hate when people say I, I'm in support of the culture. No, you need to say I'm in support of black people. Not the culture, black people. Because if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have a lot of the stuff that you have in rap and music, period. What we have pretty much is pop culture now. The black experience is pop culture in the mainstream culture. A lot of the slang, like slay, that came from gay black men. So, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, slay and shade. I'm not trying to shade you. Where do you think these words came from? Gay black men. So, you know, it's a lot about the origin of a lot of things that people, they like to take and add into something and everybody can use it. But people say, why can't we share it? And why does it seem like black people are so bitter about who can wear this and who can't? Because black people never had the opportunity to say let's share it. It was always, we just gonna take it. Take, 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 take. That, that was it. You know, it was taken. We never had a say about it. So, you know, everybody now is using it all around the world. In South Korea, hip hop is a very big. And I feel like that they don't really understand the history behind it. And they need to know the history behind it. Because otherwise, that takes away from the flavor. And when they go and they try to use this aesthetic and it's not their experience, don't rap about something that's not your experience. If you know that you're not pimping hoes and you're not smoking weed and you're not about that street flight of gang banging, you shouldn't be putting that in your raps. Because I'm going to think that you're about that life and you're not about it. And that means that you fake. Rap about your experience. I don't care if you're rapping about studying all month long. You can do that and I would like that. You can make a beautiful rap song out of that and have a really nice flow. Rap about your experiences. Don't go and do something that you know you really don't know anything about. Because on our side of things, on black people's side of life, that's actually 
our experience in our everyday life. It's not a costume. It's not something to make fun of. It's not something to look cool. That's everyday life. There are people out here that really have to sell drugs because there's no other job opportunities out there for them. They're not always taking it. They're not always shooting people. But they're doing what they can for their kids. You know, like, there's a lot of people that don't understand that. They don't try to understand it. They only want to see it as entertainment. And that's it. And it does make me very sad. There's a lot of people that need to be called out. And we need to weed through the people that, okay, you're an ally. We see you cool. We see that you really about the hip-hop lifestyle. And we see that you really are in support of us. Okay, that's cool. You go over there. But the ones that are over here acting a whole complete fool that really don't know nothing. They talking like that because they think it's cool. There are a lot of people in Korea. I was watching a video recently of this guy that was acting a complete fool. It's a channel I watch. <laughs> wow. Woo! Hey. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. Yo, you already know, man. Yo, Shimano Contents, man. You already know how we look, man. We looking fly as a motherfucker right now, man. And he was on Show Me The Money. There's some people on Show Me The Money that just be doing too much. And he does a whole lot. And... I want to tell a lot of people that do this, you need to take a train station full of seats, a hospital waiting room full of seats, a stadium full of seats, just go somewhere, just just sit somewhere and just stay down, please. <la�> Yo, Hano TV, trial, kudo, alarm sergeant, skirt, 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 pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> because I know that's not your experience. You try to pretend like it is, but it's not. You just sat up and you just watched a whole lot of stuff inspired by black people and you using it because you think it looks cool and that's going to get you clout. But really, in reality, you don't care about black people at all. And, you know, it's just like, stop. Just stop. Just just leave our stuff alone then. Like, if you're not really about it and about understanding the history in it, because that's what rap is. That's what hip-hop is. That's what R&B is. That's what the way that we talk, walk, dress, dance is. If you don't understand the history behind that, then you're not genuine. You need to understand something like that. So that's why I don't take Show Me The Money seriously. That's why I don't take a lot of those rappers out here that don't get it. I don't take them seriously. You need to understand the culture. You need to understand the people in the culture. Otherwise, you lost. So this is a lot to think about, you guys. Put below how you feel about this topic. This is a very loaded, important topic. Anybody can comment on it. I want to see your opinions below. Follow on social media, mostly my Instagram. I also have a blog on East Asian pop culture. The link is always down below. <laughs> and remember, be real, stay real, live in the real. And I will be back.